Chuck, do you work for the plane dealer? Okay. <laughs> That's Becky's job to ask me that question, not you. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me just pause and say to you that the world is coming at us at lightning speed. And these investments that we're talking about, these are not luxuries. These are necessities. Ohio, by almost any measure today, is not at the head of the class. But here's the good news. We've got assets that can easily make us the head of the class if we invest in those assets. If we were a separate country, Ohio would be the 25th largest country in the world. We are fourth in rail. We are fourth in highways. We are fourth in freight. We've got more freight that goes over the Lake Erie and the Ohio River that goes through the entire Panama Canal in one year. We've got a workforce of 5.8 million people, larger than the total population of 35 states. We've got a work ethic second to none. Ginger Graham, the president and CEO of Amlin Pharmaceuticals in San Diego, came to Governor Strickland and I in our first few weeks in office and said, we are looking to locate in a state where we can have a human capital pipeline, where you can meet our short-term and long-term needs. And we were in competition with Arizona and North Carolina and Massachusetts, and we knew this was going to be tough. We spent hours and hours and hours with Ginger Graham and her team. I'm happy to tell you that because we put together a customized solution that met their needs, Amlin recently announced a $400 million capital investment that will bring 500 pharmaceutical jobs to Ohio, and we won the competition. And after, after we won the competition, I sat down with Ginger and I said, Ginger, this competition was stiff. Tell me the truth. How did we do this? And she said, well, you did all the right things, but you had an advantage, Lee, that I didn't want to tell you about unless you won it. But your advantage was something that you probably don't appreciate. She said, when I go to a cocktail party or a dinner party in San Diego, the question always seems to come up, what kind of house do you live in or what kind of car do you drive? When I go to Alabama or Mississippi or North Carolina, the question is always, what family do you come from? She said, when I go to Boston or New York or Connecticut, the question at every dinner party is, what school did you go to? But she said, when I come to Ohio, no matter where I go, whether it's a lunch, a breakfast, a dinner party, a cocktail party, it always seems that the question is, where do you work? She said, you've got a work ethic that is second to none. You don't appreciate it, but you need to know that if you can build on that labor pool, if you can build on that work ethic, and you can create a synchronized, connected, integrated, customized, demand-driven, business-driven workforce development system, you will beat North Carolina every day of the week. But the reason they beat you, she said sometimes, is because they got a weaker and fra more fragile and more shallow foundation, but on top of it, they built this beautiful workforce development system. But if you do the same thing, you win, because your foundation is deeper, wider, and stronger. And so that is our challenge, and that's exactly what we intend to do. And we've got no time to waste, because as I said, the world's coming at us fast. You know that there will be more text messages sent before you go to bed tonight, starting just today, more text messages than exceed the total population of the planet. Every day, more text messages are sent than the total population of the planet. And a very little known fact that most of you don't know, 42% of those text messages will be sent by my daughter, Jessica <laughs> Elaine Fisher. <laughs> All right, trust me. If you have a 16-year-old daughter, they're sending most of those text messages. If MySpace were a country, be the eighth largest country in the world. There will be more children who take the SAT in English this spring in China than in the United States. I repeat, who take it in English in China than in the United States. Thomas Friedman in his book says that when many of us were at the dinner table, 
Our parents used to say, eat all that food on your plate because there's a child starving in China. Well, you know what we should be saying to our children today? No, no, well, that's good. That, that, might, that too, but what I think you should say is, eat all the food on your plate because there's a child in China starving for your job. Bottom line is, we are in a competition. And this competition is serious. We're not just competing with Indiana, we are competing with India. So my bottom line is, that investment I just talked about, you better believe we better make these investments right now. Because standing still is the same thing as falling behind when the world is coming at you at lightning speed. So do you have to be responsible? Yes. But I can tell you that if you float a bond issue, yes, we will have to budget, Chuck Hermana, money in our budget for the next number of years that is probably about less than 1% of our total budget in order to pay off that debt. That is well worth the price for creating what could be not only 80,000 jobs over the next three to four years, but leveraging literally millions, if not billions, in private investment and federal dollars. When you create jobs, you're not just creating direct jobs, you're creating indirect jobs, you're creating venture capital, you're creating private investment, you're creating federal research dollars. Our third frontier program, when it was created a number of years ago in the prior administration, and the prior administration, by the way, deserves great credit for having done it, there was a prediction that for every one public dollar we would put in, in third frontier dollars, we would leverage three dollars in private investment. You know what's proven to be the case? For every one dollar of third frontier money invested in a bioscience company or in research development at Cleveland State or Case Western or Case or University of Akron, we are leveraging nine dollars. And the further along the company is, the greater the leverage. In some cases, the leverage is 45 to 1. That's the way you measure the investment, Chuck. Whether that $1.7 million will leverage jobs, indirect jobs. In 1979, Honda came to Ohio. And a lot of people said, you know, they're not going to bring many jobs. You know how many jobs they brought when they came to Ohio? About 60 jobs. Big deal. Today, you know how many jobs in Ohio depend on Honda between the people who work there and the people who supply Honda? The answer, 60,000 Ohioans who are working today because Honda came here in 1979. I believe the same thing will happen many decades from now with Amlin and many of the investments we make. Will all the investments succeed? No. But in the Silicon Valley, if you make 30 investments, and 28 fail and two succeed in the Silicon Valley, they celebrate the two that succeed. In Cleveland, we talk about the 28 that fail. I suggest that we're going to have to take some risks, and I think our odds will be better than 28 and 2 if we do. So the bottom line is, I believe the people of this state want leadership that is bold that is willing to take some responsible risks to move Ohio to the head of the class so we can be proud and say we are a state that invested in its strengths, that invested in its assets, that married its proud past of Thomas Edison and the Wright brothers and Charles Kettering and steel and glass and reinvented itself and linked and leveraged itself to a dynamic future that moved it to the head of its class because its leaders, its members of city council, its mayors, its governors, decided that it was time to be bold and make some targeted investments in Ohio's strengths and move it to the head of the class and let people for the first time in a long time have a vision of their own future. That is the business we are all in. That is the end of my speech. Thanks.